Hello everyone, welcome back to the homestead. We've got a cow ready to be milked. Um, and to a recap of our first week building our large greenhouse. And be sure to stay tuned to the end because we had another hatch on the homestead that we want to share with you. It's a little chilly this morning, but the sun is bright, so that's why I'm in the greenhouse again. I'm really hoping that last night was our last frost. Uh, we spend a lot of time covering and uncovering things this time of year, which is why having a greenhouse is going to be really, really helpful. We've got a lot of little plants here in our greenhouse that are just over ready to get out there in the ground. So looking forward to trickling those out into the garden this week now that hopefully our last frost is past. Um, I call this a greenhouse. It's really not a greenhouse for growing much food. It's mostly where we do our seed starting. And the main reason we built this structure was because years ago, this big, huge tank that we have in here, it's a 1500 gallon rainwater catchment tank. That was our main source for watering our cows through the winter time. Now we have a solar well, which is awesome. It's so much easier to use the solar powered well for the, for the cows now, but we still use this tank for some garden watering. So we really don't grow a whole lot of food in this space. We have one very small bed behind me where we've got some radishes growing right now, but it's mostly just for seed starting and keeping this tank from freezing so much in the winter time. So our big picture plan on the homestead is to actually have two greenhouses. We were going to first start with expanding this greenhouse, kind of rebuilding it, making it a little bit stronger. We've had the roof blow off a couple times. Uh, we really just created this greenhouse out of a lot of free materials that we had on hand. It doesn't have true glass, it's just got these vinyl sheets here that they last for a couple of few years but then they have to be replaced. So anyway, the plan was to first rebuild this greenhouse because it's right next to the house and we use it a lot for all of our seed starting. And then the larger greenhouse that's going to be connected to our main crop area was going to be after this greenhouse. Well, uh, priorities changed as they often do in the homestead and long story short, our ducks were getting attacked by predators, so we had to move them to our front garden. They've outstayed their welcome in the front garden, and now they need their duck house um, for protection next to their duck yard. And that is a part of our large greenhouse. So that's why we're building the large greenhouse first, and this one's gonna have to wait. So we've had many people ask us in the past, why don't we buy one of those huge poly tunnels and use that as a greenhouse? I've never really had a piece about getting one of those. We live in an area that gets really heavy, heavy winds. I've seen other people who have had them had a lot of damage and had to redo them because of heavy winds. So I've always just kind of had in my mind a permanent greenhouse with real glass, very solid build that could last for years and years. So just a quick overview of the size and layout of the greenhouse that we're currently working on is it's a 42 by 12 foot very long skinny greenhouse it runs mostly east west so it's got a really long south facing exposure and that's where all the grow beds are going to be the north side of it is where the duck house is going to be and it's going to be built above a composting area and we're also going to have either one large or a couple smaller rainwater catchment tanks on the north side as well. We are building it on a slope, so from the highest point to the lowest point, there's about a three, three and a half foot difference in elevation. So we're using six by six posts as our main construction posts. We're going to skirt underneath all the window sills with metal, and so the metal can be cut to go along with the slope of the land. So it's gonna be mostly glass on the south facing side. The east and west ends are going to have some operable windows for air ventilation. The whole north side is going to hopefully be similar to what we did in this greenhouse. It's a double wall system and we have a lot of this really heavy duty vinyl still. So we're going to do double wall vinyl to give a little of insulative value to the north side. And last, the roof is actually going to be a vinyl as well. And we're going to cover half of the roof with window screening so that in the summertime we can pull the vinyl off of that section. That'll expose the whole grow bed space underneath to natural light and some rain. But hopefully most of the bugs will stay out with the having the window screening up there. 
And I forgot to mention that the duck house is going to have access to the entire duck yard and duck pond area and they'll only stay in the duck house at night. The ducks won't be able to get into the greenhouse itself unless we want them to. We are going to build the greenhouse beds about two feet high so that the ducks can't get into them if like in the coldest parts of winter we want to let them into the greenhouse itself. We're going to be using a lot of passive solar heating. So um, when you put a large water tank, especially if it's dark colored in a greenhouse, that helps capture heat during the day and release it into the greenhouse at night. Um, we're going to have compost in there, which will also help heat it up. Having the ducks in there could could potentially help keep it warmer as well. And then having the double wall system on the north side will um, also help. So. Um, our hope is that it's going to be similar to this greenhouse which stays about 10 to 15 degrees warmer in the winter time and then actually in the summertime it does stay a little bit cooler for a while because our because the water tank actually releases a little bit of cool air from the nighttime cools so for now the plan is that the greenhouse will be passively heated and cooled uh, but in the future we may add some sort of heat source um, if, if it's needed we'll see all right, so now let's recap the first week of construction. Uh, day one was supplies. As I mentioned in our last video, our good friend Mark is here helping out. So Mark and my husband Kip uh, went into Springfield and got a whole bunch of supplies. They weren't able to get everything on the trailer, couldn't fit at all, uh, but they got most of the lumber that we needed to get going. Day two, it didn't seem like a whole lot happened, but a whole lot happened. <laughs> Mark and our boys were able to make sure that the cement that we put in for all of the main posts were square. And thank the Father, they were all square. And so um, everything was squared off and preparations were made for getting the main six by six posts in place. They ran into a little bit of an issue with the brackets. So they actually had the posts up and then had to take them back down. Uh, so Nate's going to explain the issue we had with the brackets for the main post because he'll explain it much better than I will. <laughs> yeah, so basically what we had were these bolts called redheads. What you're supposed to do is just pound them into the holes in the concrete that you make and at the bottom of the bolt there's a piece of metal kind of shaped like this in a circle with like a metal ring going around it. So then when you tighten the bolt it starts to lift it up and the metal ring gets penned and it gets mashed against the edge of the concrete. So it gets jammed in there and it's impossible to get out. But the metal ring just wasn't hooking on the concrete. So they just started coming out. So then we just ended up pouring epoxy in just to hold it all in place. Yeah, so instead of um, being able to put those posts up that second day, um, you guys had to wait for the epoxy for 24 hours. Yeah. And so you had to take all the posts down, wait for the epoxy, and then you could put the posts back up on huh? it. Yep. <laughs> cool, thanks for clarifying all that. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so then day three, while they were waiting for that epoxy to dry so they could get the main post back up, uh, the guys worked on unloading all of this, the lumber from the trailer because we had someone that needed to use our trailer. And then they worked on the block wall for the compost area and got that almost finished. We didn't quite have enough block. That was, an, that was part of the order that didn't fit on the trailer the first day. And the way they did the block wall was using some kind of glue, actually. <laughs> I caught Nate with a mouthful of leftover pancakes. <laughs> uh, he's going to explain what was used for these blocks. We didn't use mortar. What do we put in between the blocks, Nadie? Well, it's like a block glue, mostly used for like landscaping. <laughs> okay. But it works well for us. You just you squirt it on. You put the blocks on top, and even after just a few minutes, it's already hardening. Yeah, cool. <laughs> nice. The first layer took a long time because everything had to be leveled, um, but then after that it went up really quick just gluing it all together. And then the plan was to fill all of the cells that they're going to have main support posts coming off of them, and then just the top layer, top couple inches all the way around um, to make sure that mice and snakes and things don't end up living in the block. Got there, Jay Bug. 
Ooh, pretty rock. <laughs> you two having fun playing out here? Yeah, it's a little windy today, huh? <laughs> Ooh, somebody made some little, did you make some mud treats? Yeah. Did you make the mud treats? Yep. <laughs> so then day four, they were able to get those posts back up and do a little bit more work on the block, getting um, things set up for the posts that are gonna come off of the block wall. And the brackets, brackets are all in place for the rest of the posts. What do you think of this greenhouse? <laughs> you can't tell what it is yet, huh? But yeah. some of the hardest things have been done. Yeah. It's a little makeshift workbench here so none of the tools get lost. That was Mark's idea. Day five, they worked on putting some of the sill plates in that uh, were going to hold the windows and um, then made another trip into Springfield for more supplies. bottom up at the block below. Day six they were able to completely finish the block wall and have it all prepped and ready for all the posts coming off of the wall. So this block wall here, part of the greenhouse, is going to be a compost bin and also we're going to build a duck coop on top of it. Hey sweetheart, are you watching? Day 7 was actually yesterday from the time I'm filming this and that was a really huge step forward. We actually had another good friend, Dwayne, come and help out for a little bit and Kip was available to help as well. So they got holes dug for 4x4 supports going underneath all of the sill plates um, to give extra support for the 12 foot spans. Um, we had a few spaces where there was a 12 foot span and so an extra 4x4 support went in under the sill plate and they cemented those in. Uh, they got the posts up, six by six posts up off of the block wall. Uh, I forgot to mention on day six, uh, they also put up uh, three posts coming from the front side of the compost area for more support for the duck house. They got part of the north facing wall framed up with two by four framing. They got the west wall framed up and the first window ready to go in. And they started work on the duck house framing as well. Hey, love. Hello. Hello. Makeshift workbench here. <laughs> it's the window seal, but right now it's where all the tools go. Yeah. <laughs> Are you watching? Yep. 
first window. <laughs> Needs a little work. Got to redo the screen on it, clean it up a bit, but it's free. Yeah. Repur repurposing. That's right. <laughs> To cut down on costs for this greenhouse, we're using a lot of recycled glass. Glass that we've had stored in our barn for a long time because when we initially got our windows for our cabin from Craigslist, uh, they came with a lot of extra glass. We also have some friends and neighbors who had some extra operable windows and doors and so we're just using a lot of recycled materials. We were given a lot of really thick vinyl, uh, white vinyl that we've been using all over the homestead. So that's going into the greenhouse. We were also given a lot of block for free. So we're trying to cut down on costs as much as possible to make this doable. So it may not be the most beautiful greenhouse in the end, but it's going to be strong and practical and hopefully we're gonna be able to grow a lot of food in it. So that's where we're at after the first week of working on the greenhouse. There was a rest day in there as well. <laughs> um, and now we're going into week two and I'm going to be filming as we go. And I'll be sharing week two with you in next week's video. Before we go, Esther Pye has a quick thank you to give. Thank you, Isabel, Francine, and Lori for these beautiful skirts. I love them. Yeah. So if any of you have experience with greenhouse builds and have some tips and tricks for us, please leave it in the comments below. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thank you so much to our patrons who make these videos possible. And until next time, we pray blessings over you and yours. Whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. Hi, Mama. Look at this new Mama. Got ten little ones. Good job, Mama. Little compost heap, Mama. Everything's so cute. We're gonna have to help them all out of the compost bins here, but we'll do that probably tomorrow. She's got food and water up here. As soon as she's ready to take them away from the nest, we'll help her get them all out of the compost area. They're so cute. Oh my goodness. I know they are.